know these days war games means a lot more than a two ring cage match, right? I'm Chris Wall with the wrestling vlog who always tells it like it is. Once again, we have a Survivor Series without a Survivor Series match. I'm telling you, they should just call the PLE War Games and get it over with. In any case, it seems a little weird to be talking about War Games these days, right? With Putin chewing on his fingernails to wonder how he can talk his way out of the mess that is Ukraine. Not to mention the Israel-Hamas war and the Syrian civil war going on. It seems that we are all waiting for the red horsemen of the apocalypse to show up and make World War III happen. Not to mention the wars on the streets of Chicago a century ago, thanks to Al Capone, which is where our PLE is taking place. Oh yeah, and a certain pres presidential candidate claiming that he's going to declare war on everyone who doesn't come around to his way of thinking when and if he gets back in the White House. Civil War II, anyone? And how do we decide to distract ourselves from all the wars going on? Why, by having a premium live event called War Games, of course! Two title matches, one grudge match, and two two-ring cage matches that are guaranteed to not be as bloody as any war we know of today. Well, I guess it's as good a distraction as any, as we hope not to have a Christmas at Ground Zero, as Weird Al would put it. Here are my predictions for Survivor Series War Games 2023. We start with Dragon Lee versus Santos Escobar. You know, I keep wondering why Carlito hung around. Oh, well, sure, he got a big pop at Backlash in Puerto Rico, but that was his home field, anyway. I had hoped it was a cameo and that was it, but hey, at least it made Escobar remember that he was supposed to be the U.S. champ instead of Ray Ray. I knew Santos was turning as soon as he left those brass knuckles behind for Logan Paul. And thanks to him... Now SmackDown has two titles that will barely be defended. But let's face it, if and when Mysterio comes back, he'll be the only one to take down Escobar. Not the former Legado de Fantasma, not Selena Vega, not Carlito, and certainly not a rookie like Dragon Lee. Sorry. Winner is Santos Escobar. Intercontinental Championship. Gunter defends against The Miz. Look, I'm as happy as anyone that The Miz is still getting pushes after so many years in the WWE, but the fact of the matter is, he really doesn't deserve another title run. And he is especially not the one to play Ultimate Warrior to Gunter's Honky Tonk Man and end the longest single IC reign in history. Well, sure, Imperium seems to have issues with each other, especially Kaiser and Vinci not getting along, but... The one thing about Gunter is that he doesn't need cronies to be the ring general. He's taken pretty much everyone to task by himself, and if Roman Reigns ever loses the WWE Universal title, Gunter will be primed to grab it like Randy Savage did a year after he lost the IC title belt. The Miz? He's turned into an entertainer more than a wrestler. He lucked out in that Fatal 4, and his luck will run out here. Winner is still and still champ Gunter. Women's World Championship. Ray Ripley against Zoe Stark. Stark still has a lot of potential in her, but I'm worried the WWE are making too much of her too quickly. Then again, I always thought the fall of the Judgment Day would start with my, Mammy losing her title. I thought it would start when Dom Dum lost his title, when Balor and Priest lost theirs, but no, they just won the Mac. So with Ripley as the real de facto leader of the group, her losing the title should bring the faction to its knees, right? Snake don't die until its head's cut off, right? But should it really be Stark doing it? Sure, she may have some backing by the other face women in the Royal Locker Room, but again, it seems to be too much too soon. Winning a title, women's title should be the peak of her career, not the relative start of it. 
I'm sorry, but as much as I'd love Ripley to drop the belt, I don't see Stark pick, being the one to pick it up. Winner and still champion, Ray Ripley. Women's War Games match. Team Bel Air versus Damage Control. It seems there are cracks in both teams. Bailey's been trying to assert herself as leader, but she's now under outnumbered by the Nippon girls and Dakota Kai translating for them. And we all saw the miscommunication between Flair and Lynch. Not even Bel Air and Shotzi could work this out. So how the heck can they get it together tonight? A good question that deserves a good answer. But the only way we'll find out is <clears throat> find out what it is will be which team gets the advantage. And as ridiculous as the main silence, they're letting the WWE universe decide. Come on, guys, we are way past Cyber Sunday. And you know damn well that the average WWE fan doesn't seem to know that whoever gets the advantage is more than likely to lose a war games. So that means expect Team Bel Air to get the advantage and damage control to win. Winner is damage control. Finally, men's war games match. Team Rhodes versus the Judgment Day. You can probably guess who I'm picking based on what I just said, but let me explain why it'll happen besides the advantage. First of all, while McIntyre has gone full heel, he has zero love for the Judgment Day. He's just on the team so he can get his paws on Jey Uso again and get him from ruining, for ruining his career. As long as Jey isn't dead, he'll focus solely on him and not care about the rest. Second, this is Cody's dad's baby, one of the best matches he made for NWA WCW. And I'm sure Dusty's looking down from heaven and praying Cody does him proud. Fifth, at third, J.D. McDonough is still not liked by the self-proclaimed leader, Damian Priest. Truth be told, Sami Zayn is still a little cheesed at Uso for taking Owens away from him, but both he and Seth Frickin' Rollins seem to have worked through. And lastly, three words. Randall Keith Orton. No sooner than he reaches 20-year mark than he gets seriously hurt. And how can you bet against him in his first match back? That, plus the advantage being against him, means that the winners will be Team Rhodes. Those are my picks. Pray that we don't go DEFCON 1 before it's over. I'm Chris Wall with Wrestling Vlog, who always tells it like it is. Pray for peace. And I'll see you.